Good morning. Welcome home to Trinity, a place of sharing the gospel and growing God's family. Uh, let's take a few minutes and watch this month's edition of the Wells Connection video. Hi, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. Every Wells congregation has members who may only attend worship once or twice a year, or perhaps have drifted away entirely. Jesus tells us how to reconnect with weak or lost sheep, and when we do, great blessings can follow. Terry Borchert was a Wells member, but she didn't attend church very often. Her life was going the wrong direction, in many ways. I look back now and Satan had its grips on me. For the longest time I felt like I was dirt. Please have a seat. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Today, it's a very different story, as Terry has now reconnected with her home congregation. Yes, I, I uh, kind of fell away from church mm -hmm. for a while and Visits like this have played a key role in bringing people like Terry back into the fold. The goal isn't judgment. Rather, it's reaching out in Christian love, caring for our neighbor. I feel so blessed that I was thought of, you know, and, and they're not, nobody's looking down on me. They're just, I'm their family. I'm their family. They're my family. You know, it just, that's what it feels like. It just, I'm so happy. I just feel so warm. Welcome. And you're so, February's welcome. Thank you. As a part of the church community, Terry's pastor asked her to play a role in the church's new ministry effort. Do you know what that feels like being asked to be involved when you don't feel like you're worthy? It, it just, it feels absolutely awesome. And so he asked me if I wanted to get involved and Ever since then, it's like, this is what this is what I was supposed to do. This is this is this is it. Welcome. This is February's Welcome Magazine and the Connect Card. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. I can't wait to get to church, and I'm their greeter. I mean, they bless me with that. People come in and hi, how are you? I you know, it's just this is absolutely awesome because I feel that that's my family, that's my second family. Terry is one of 300 formerly inactive members of St. John's who have now returned to full participation. This astounding blessing came after the church made a commitment to put this work on the front burner, to reach out to members who haven't been in worship. It's part of looking out for your brother. It's a, it's a commitment, a promise we made when they were baptized. Maybe they're, they're depressed, maybe they're missing a loved one, maybe they are going through an illness, maybe they uh, went away to college and uh, they're just waiting for someone to reach out to them. Maybe they're lonely. Uh, there could be a lot of different reasons why someone strays. The reasons are varied, but the solution is always the same. Reaching out with the gospel in Christian love. The process here started with the pastor's encouragement of the elders to make visits, send handwritten letters, and then visit again. I went and saw him a month or so ago, correct? They still wanted to be part of the church, but they didn't figure anybody cared about him anymore. The focus on visits and letters was just the first step. The church also worked to establish a welcoming community for returning members. You're on love. I, I love them so that I want them here. And as a, a congregation as a whole, we just kind of um, became more welcoming, became more friendly, became a family like we should be. One key to developing that family atmosphere was to encourage returning members to get involved in the church's ministry, to find a role that fits their gifts. I mean, and it, it's really brought our, the older people, the younger people together. It's just, it's, it's an amazing feeling on what's going on here because there's people that are working together that you would never think would be working together. The template that has so blessed St. John's can be applied at almost any congregation. That's why our Synod has designated October 27th as Welcome Home Sunday, 
to put a special emphasis on reaching members who have not been attending. Maybe ask that loved one, when was the last time you were at the Lord's Supper? Give them an opportunity to remember what church is all about. It's about God's grace, it's about His forgiveness, it's about His love. The Welcome Home Sunday is not a one-time event. It's part of a larger process to create a culture where those who drift away will always know we want them back. God wants them back. The Welcome Home Initiative has a wide range of resources available for congregations, training for lay people, templates for letters and invitations, plus a range of special worship materials. Check the Wells website for more. Today we are celebrating Pentecost, and so our opening hymn today is hymn 184, Holy Spirit, enter in. May God bless you as you worship him today.
this morning we follow the order of worship, which is in the service folder. Please stand for worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O oh Lord, open my lips. Hasten to save me, O oh God. Dear friends, let us draw, approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worry and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sin. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world. Let us worship Him. Please be seated. On this Pentecost Sunday, I guess one word might uh, sum up our focus, or maybe three. It is joy of the Spirit. We see that joy in our first scripture reading from Isaiah chapter 12. In that day you will say, give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud, and sing for joy, people of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel among you. This is God's word. Let's respond by joining in singing Psalm 51b. It's on page 87 in the front of the hymnal. In Psalm 51, we ask the Holy Spirit to create in us a clean heart. Spirit, renew our hearts and can 
please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel for today is just two verses from John chapter 15. Jesus says, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. This is the word of our Lord. Let's join in singing hymn 176, Come Holy Ghost, God and Lord. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters in Christ, last week we celebrated the ascension, Jesus ascending, going into heaven. And one of the things that Jesus said when he ascended into heaven was this, 
For John baptized with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And he explained what that meant. He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Well, here we are a few days after the ascension, uh, 10 days to be specific. And what Jesus said actually happened then on Pentecost. Let's take a look at what happens in Acts chapter 2. I don't have this on the screen. It's printed in your service folder. So let's take a look at that. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Uh, Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, <laughs> Cretans, and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, Ah, they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So, as we look at here, what happened here on Pentecost, and as we actually bring to a close this sermon series, Life by the Spirit, as we look at the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit that we look at today is joy. But before we talk about joy, let's look at some of the details here of Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost actually means 50. It took place 50 days after the Passover. And actually, it, it wasn't something new. The Jews, Jewish people have been celebrating the Passover for a long time. Actually, it was one of three main festivals for the Jewish people. Um, there was Passover, Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles, or, or Tents. Pentecost, it, it was um, kind of like our Thanksgiving. It, it was uh, a, a day celebrating, thanking God at the beginning of, of, of the early harvest. And so, that's what they celebrated. That's what they did. So why do we celebrate it? Well, it's because of what happened on that one Pentecost. There are any number of miracles on that Pentecost. So let's take a look at some of them. First, there is wind without wind. Acts chapter 2 said, Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Wind, a violent wind sound, uh, but nothing's blowing, nothing's falling outside. Almost sounding like a tornado, but, but 
nothing, j just the, the sound, the, the wind without the wind. I don't know if you remember way in the beginning of this sermon series. I, I talked about one of the Hebrew words that um, are translated as, as spirit. It's pronounced ruach. It means breath or, or wind or spirit. So this wind sound without wind is actually a direct reference showing that the Holy Spirit is present there. On top of that miracle then is, is fire without fire. Acts chapter 2 says, They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Fire. That wasn't fire. Um, rather, I don't know, kind of weird or, or, or random. Why fire? I mean, normally if, if you see some fire up here, you're, you're going to be patting it out. A fire and hair is not a good combination. There's a lot of YouTube videos about that. So, so what's the deal here? Well, maybe it, it's a reference to when God appeared to Moses in the burning bush that didn't burn. Or, or that pillar of fire that led the Israelites throughout uh, the, the wilderness during the day. Whatever the direct reference is, it is certainly showing, once again, that, that God, the Holy Spirit, is present right there. That's a miracle. And, and then there's boldness from being cowardly. It, it was just a few days before this, not that long, that these disciples were, were locked in a room because they're afraid of everyone else. A and yet, here on Pentecost, you, you see them having this boldness. Peter, who um ha had denied Jesus. Peter, who... um with the other disciples that had ran and, and fled, they're out there with this, this boldness. That that was quite a, a change. But remember our gospel reading today. Jesus told them that they would receive power from on high, the, the Holy Spirit, the advocate, and they would be witnesses right there in Jerusalem and to the ends of the earth. And then with that, that boldness came speaking um, without education. Acts chapter 2 says, All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Okay, so this is probably the miracle we think of when we think of Pentecost. But they spoke in these different languages without education in them. They, they didn't go to school to learn the languages. They, they didn't have some kind of a subscription to a, on, on a, a website that, that taught them in five weeks how to learn, teach or talk this one language. This is one minute not knowing a language, and the very next, um, being fluent in a completely new language. This was amazing. And then all these miracles of Pentecost actually added up to the biggest miracle which we didn't even read about. The biggest miracle of Pentecost, um, we see before what I read in Acts 2 and, and after. In Acts 1, very end of the chapter, it says this. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120. So about 120 are there. And then at the end of Pentecost day, Later in Acts chapter 2, it says this, those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Okay, that's a miracle. Can, can you imagine if in one day we had 3,000 baptisms here at Trinity? That is a miracle. And all those miracles of Pentecost then also brought joy on Pentecost. Th there's joy. Because first, Pentecost shows us that salvation is for everyone. 
Uh, there are all those people gathered there in Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost. The, the, the prophecy of Joel that, that Peter quoted said this, in that last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit in all people. Jesus said that his disciples would be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and, and to the ends of the earth. Salvation, ultimately, is, is for you and for me, anyone of any kind of skin color, um, what, what, whatever kind of distinction you can make, language or any distinction, salvation is for all people. That brings joy. And, and the, the culmination of that is this great and glorious day that, that Peter, in quoting Joel, talked about. How does that great and glorious day not bring joy? When Jesus returns, and we will see Jesus, and, and Peter, and, and Moses, and, and Mom, and all those that we miss so dearly, that will bring joy. Another thing that brings joy is that Jesus uses imperfect people. Uh, Peter was not perfect. None of those disciples were. They had deserted Jesus. They had fled. And yet Jesus chose to use them. That brings joy. Even that there's joy here in, in doing something completely new. <laughs> Speaking in all those languages, even though never having been taught them. You, you know, sometimes um, when, when you do something new and you're kind of forced to do it, and, and you do it, that, that brings joy. Uh, uh, think of someone who, um, skydiving who's just really afraid of, of heights. But they do it. That, that sense of accomplishment, it brings joy. And that's exactly what the disciples were feeling here. They, they, they did something. They, they were bold. But they hadn't been that way before. Not like this. And on top of that, there, there's joy in that God uses all of us, young, old, uh, men, women. There's joy there on Pentecost. But, but the, the, the miracles and the joy of Pentecost back then have direct results for us. There's miracles for us. Okay, maybe not wind without wind or fire without fire. Certainly not um, speaking a new language just like that, but there are miracles for us. If you're here today, because you believe that Jesus is your Savior, if you're here today because you have have um, confessed your faith and joined this family of believers we call Trinity Lutheran Church, um, it, that's because of a miracle. The Bible says no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. I, but by nature, we, we are dead in our sins and, and our transgressions. The only way that changes, the only way we're brought to faith is, is that faith is not produced here. It's produced by the Holy Spirit. That, that is a miracle. And, and okay, maybe we, we can't speak a new language just like that, but, but when we grow in our faith and we get stronger in that, that that's the Holy Spirit at work. When we use the spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us, that that's the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. That there are miracles when the Holy Spirit works right here in us and, and through us. And that brings joy. But maybe right now in part of your brain you're thinking, yeah, okay, those things bring joy. I really don't have joy. There's a reason for that. There is an enemy of joy, something that, that robs us of joy, a thief of joy, if you will. And it's this. Comparison. And every one of us, we're, we're, we're really good at this. Okay, Someone who is single and sees a, a couple, that, that comparison can, can rob them of, of joy. 
someone who's divorced sees what someone else has that they lost and, and think, I'm a failure because of that comparison. In a blended family, one child may, may see how a mom treats them, but that's not how dad treats them. And that comparison robs them of joy. A teenager, seeing what someone else has, <laughs> that definitely robs you of joy. Being retired and, and comparing what you used to do and what you can't do now, you, we are all good at this, right? Comparison is that thief of our joy. Now, what would really is joy? Because I think sometimes we use joy and happiness as being interchangeable, and, and actually, they are different. What is happiness? Happiness is this. It's something that's based on circumstances. Let me put it this way. In your mind, complete this sentence. I'll be happy when... And maybe whatever that fill-in-the-blank is for you, maybe it's, it's uh, when you get a promotion at work, I'll, I'll be happy when I go on vacation, I'll be happy when um, I get married, I'll be happy when I graduate, whatever it is, when you get it, there may be a moment of happiness until you think about the next thing. See, see happiness is based on circumstances. Joy, that's different. Joy is this. It's deeper. It's not based on circumstances. It's how you look at things. So joy. Example of that would be um, Job in the Bible. Right? He, um, his circumstances were not good. And yet those circumstances didn't change how he looked at things. Joy is, is, is way, way deeper than that. Joy isn't having a happy smile on your face all the time. It's, it's, it's that deep thing that, that, that isn't because of circumstances, isn't based on circumstances. It's, it's just how you look at things. Like I said before, we're all really good at robbing ourselves of that deeper joy because we compare and we look at circumstances. Thankfully, Jesus had joy. Hebrews chapter 12 says, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus didn't let the circumstances get in the way of what he felt here, deep down. And what he felt here was joy. What he felt here was joy for you. What he felt here is wanting you to have the eternal joy of heaven. And so that meant then the circumstances he went through of the, 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 the whipping, the, the, the brutality, the, the nails, ultimately the, the death on the cross, that circumstance didn't matter. For the joy set before him, he endured all of it. For the joy that we would experience in heaven because of it. Now, remember what, what the fruit of the Spirit are, Right? We've been looking at this this entire time. The fruit of the Spirit, like, like peace and patience and, and joy and, and self-control and goodness and all that. The, the, the fruit of the Spirit are, are those divine characteristics, things that God is, that He gives us, then that the Holy Spirit works in us to, to come out of us. And so joy is something that God gives us, that He works out in us. In us, there's joy. Joy in, in salvation. Joy in, in knowing that um, 
Well, that great and glorious day that's coming, that, that, that brings joy. There's joy in knowing what our spiritual gifts are and using them. And if you've ever gone through a shape class here at Trinity or, or gone through a new member class, the, the part of that I just love is, is when people take those sticky notes and put them on the wall and you can see all the different spiritual gifts that God has given his people. And I, I love it. And I see joy when people use those gifts then. There's joy. God gives that. But what about right now at Trinity? Is there joy during a vacancy? You know, it's been a year since Pastor Benz moved to another church. Mr. Blowert left. Is there a joy in, in a vacancy like that? Perhaps some of you remember 23 years ago or so. We had another pastoral vacancy here. For 18 months, no pastor. And if you were here during that time, then, then now looking back, you, you can see the things that God was actually doing during that time. And that, that brings joy. I think in the future we're going to look back at now and we're going to see what God was doing right now here at Trinity. And that brings us joy. Remember, joy is not, not based on circumstances. It, it's, it's much deeper than that. Have you ever heard of, of um, David and Harry pears? It's a specific type of pear. When you bite into these, they are so juicy that the juice just, just runs down your arm. You can think of a joy like that. When we have that deep joy, it just comes out. And others notice it. No matter what situations or circumstances we're going through, they notice that the deeper joy that we can have. Well, okay, Pastor. But you don't know me. You don't know the things I've done, what I'm going through. That, that's true. I, I don't know everything. But it doesn't matter. There's this little tiny book. Uh, it's from Time of Grace Ministries. It's called The Neglected Spirit. It's by Pastor Mike Novotny. I just want to read something in here that, that he wrote that ah, it just really stood up. He says this. There's a better road than the highway to hell. There's the path to God. A path that ends in eternal life. A path that blesses even here and now. If you walk by the Spirit... If you turn toward what's right, you will be on the road, that road. Paul writes, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. The fruit of the Spirit is what the Spirit produces when the Spirit isn't gagged in the trunk but sitting shotgun. And then he says this, My sin has nothing to do with how God sees me. I'm good with God because of the work of God's Son and the faith given by God's Spirit. That's who I am. Yeah, I, I did that again. I know I, I said that again, but when I lie down, I don't belong to that sin. I'm not defined by that sin. I'm defined by Jesus. So Christian, enough with the guilt. Enough of thinking about you. It's time to think about Jesus. You belong to him. That's where the power comes from. That's what compels you to, to tell the flesh to take a hike. That's what helps you not to do today what you did yesterday. See, for, for Peter and those other disciples, they were imperfect. God used them. It's not what we do that defines us. It's what God has done for us. That is is what brings joy. So, today, as we close out this series, Life by the Spirit, as we finish looking at the, the fruit of the Spirit, 
we've seen that, that when we walk in step with the Spirit, th these fruit come out in our lives. I'm going to go back to one thing that, that he said in this book here. He said that the fruit of the Spirit is what the Spirit produces. When the Spirit isn't gagged in the trunk but sitting shotgun, there are snacks the Spirit shares. These, there are streets he inspires you to travel. Not only does the Spirit want you to see God face to face in heaven, he also wants you to enjoy the ride. So he brings but what, what every good road trip needs, snacks. Lots and lots of snacks, the fruit of the Spirit. May God bless you as you live your life by the Spirit, as you walk in step with the Spirit, as, as God gives you the fruit of the Spirit and, and they come out in your lives. May God the Holy Spirit bless you as you live by the Spirit. Amen. Please stand. One of the miracles the Holy Spirit does is creating faith in our hearts. And so let us confess the faith he's given us. We use the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's sing hymn 188, Creator Spirit, by whose aid. Please be seated.
Please stand for prayer. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God Almighty, we join Sharon Casper in thanking you and praising you for her successful surgery as they found that the tumor is not cancerous and she will not need chemotherapy. Lord, we thank you for these blessings and we ask you to continue blessing her and her health. And also, Lord, we join Kathy and Tim Piepenbrink in thanking you and praising you for the birth of their latest grandchild, born to Jennifer and Justin, little Jackson Heimbrook. Lord, we, we thank you for this blessing and, and keep little Jackson in your kingdom until life eternal at your side in heaven. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Praise the, Lord. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please be seated for our closing hymn.
Good morning again. Just a few announcements. Um, if you're interested in this little book uh, from Time of Grace, we actually do have several copies. They're on a, a table right by the glass doors. And I don't know if you know this, but there's a rack between the glass doors and the fireside room that has a whole bunch of devotion books from Time of Grace Ministries. So help yourself to this or any of the others that are there. Also, uh, every Tuesday morning, uh, between Trinity and Zion, we uh, have a nursing home service over at St. James Manor here in Crete. Trinity is responsible for the second Tuesday and the fourth Tuesday of the month. Um, we do need some more people to, to help, and it's, it's really a, an awesome experience. It's just simply finding people in the nursing home that want to go to church. You, you wheel them if, if they need to be wheeled in a wheelchair to the area. You help them during the service, and you take them back, and it's uh, just a great, meaningful thing for them. So if you are interested in learning more about it, if you can help out, talk to um, Diane Naki or um, um, Diane Adams or Sharon Brown, any of them. There's some information in the service folder about that. Also, uh, VBS, getting ready for uh, our Vacation Bible School later in July, but for the crafts, uh, they need some toilet paper rolls. Um, not the toilet paper itself, just the cardboard roll in the middle. So if you can save those and bring them in, that would be appreciated. And one other thing, um, we're going to be having another Bible reading challenge later this summer. And we want to uh, also include some things on social media, specifically Facebook. If um, you like Facebook and everything, and you want to help us out with uh, the putting up the posts um, regarding the the, the the Bible reading challenge, just talk to me or Mr. Leon Brands. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. Just having one person being able to do that for the whole reading challenge, which will be a, a five-week thing starting in July. That's it for the announcements. Have a blessed day.